Hello, beautiful soul, and welcome back to another video. Today's video is an intuitive message on the direction you're supposed to take and actionable steps on what you're actually supposed to do to follow that direction. If you are watching this video, there's a few things. You're gonna know if it's for you right away, especially when I share this next part, and trust that this video is exactly coming to you when you're supposed to see it and why you're supposed to see this video. This is, again, something that I channeled earlier in the day, and it is for a very specific collective and group of people. This message is for a collective group of people that are ready for major change in your life. And this is a timeless message. So whether you see it on the day that I post this or a month from now or three months from now or a year or three years from now, again, trust this message is for you. This is for you if you know that there is major change coming in your life, you've had the gut feeling, you're in the middle of this transformation, you've been ready and trying to figure out where to go, something's gotta give and you're at that point where you have been thinking about this for a really long time. You've wanted to make some major changes in your life, maybe with your partnerships, with some relationships, maybe where you move or your work or your job, something with your stability, this message is for you. This message is also for a collective group of people if you've been struggling to find out what your purpose is, if you've been struggling to figure out what your gifts are, why you're here, what you're supposed to do next in order to start creating this change, this transformation in your life that you know is coming. And lastly, this message is for you if you are someone who has had a field of interest or a subject of interest and you've had a fear of starting it because you're worried about what other people think, Maybe you're worried about, again, letting go of some of the stability in your life or something along those lines. You have something that may be a little weird or out there that you've been wanting to explore more and you've been guided to, you've been getting signals, synchronicities, and signs about it, but you just haven't had the push you've needed, the encouragement, the support. This message is for you. So if that resonates with you and this video is for you, this is what you are to focus on at this time you are to begin exploring and moving towards joy in your life. What do I mean by that? These topics, this change that you've wanted to create in your life, this transformation, this uprooting of sorts and moving to a better, higher timeline, a more fulfilling, a loving, abundant, creative life, this is your focus. You are to move towards those subjects, those business ideas, those people, those relationships, those uh, meetup groups, those different locations, the travel places and destinations you've wanted to go, you are to now focus on your joy and start tapping into your intuition. So whatever that is for you, whatever those interests are that really excite you when you think about them, and that's really that simple, this is the key indicator, whatever it is that you're thinking about, whether it's a place, a group of people, something you've wanted to try out, a new type of exercise, uh, a book or a subject, whatever that is that's been really piquing your interest and you're excited about, you are to now pursue and focus on that thing, that subject, that group of people, that place, etc. It's really about focusing again, the key word is on joy and fulfillment. Whatever's gonna bring you happiness, so as you do that, you are beginning to signal to the universe and put in motion this cycle of manifestation and creation, your seed planting right now. Maybe you've already been watering, you've planted the seeds and now you're watering them. This is for you. This is what you are to focus on now. This is what's going to bring you into your most happy, fulfilling, and abundant life. What you are to focus on specifically is what brings you joy and the education aspect of it. You're being called to focus on educating yourself. So if it's about growing your business, well, what are the business skills you need that you need to grow your business? Do you need to actually learn a new skill set in order to make your business grow? Is it a new subject entirely that you don't know about but you've wanted to look into forever, you're now supposed to focus on that. Whatever's bringing you joy, 
focus on that and now pursue the educational portion of it. Begin to expose yourself to the people, the places, the things, the books, the podcasts, the YouTube videos, whatever it is that you're interested in, you are now being called to pursue that. This next part is a direct process for beginning to get in tune with whatever those ideas are, to tap deeper into your intuition, to get clarity on what actionable steps that you're supposed to take are. Step number one is meditate. If you don't have a regular meditation practice, now's the time to start meditating. At first, if you've never meditated or you're quote unquote not good at it, which is what I hear often, or you don't have time for it, it's now time to make time. It's now time to practice and learn how to do this. At first, I would suggest a guided meditation. There's a million apps on there, Headspace, uh, Mindfulness, Insight Timer are a couple apps off the top of my head that I would recommend on your phone. Sit there for 10 minutes, do a guided mindful meditation, go on YouTube, of course. Whatever resonates with you, again, trusting your intuition, start meditating. Eventually, move to silent meditations where you are sitting there in silence in a comfortable place in a peaceful, quiet, calm environment where you can begin to tap into your own mind, your own heart, your own higher guidance, and your intuition. The meditation is the first step because you're now creating space and clarity in order to receive the guidance you need to that will direct you along the next steps that you're supposed to stay, take. So meditation is number one. Start instilling a number or a regular meditative practice. Step number two, you are to begin writing regularly. And this is not typing on your computer or doing it on your phone. This is about taking pen or pencil to paper, a notepad, whatever and just start writing. You are supposed to start letting go and writing in a stream of consciousness with no bounds and no subject in mind. Just start writing regularly. So 10 minutes a day for meditation, at least five minutes a day for writing. Again, the intention behind this, the purpose is to create space. As you write and you begin to just let your stream of consciousness go, talking about the events of the day, something that's bothering you, something that you're looking forward to, something that you need clarity to, just start creating an inner dialogue with yourself on paper because again, as you clear the energetic and emotional debris in your mind and your heart and the stream of consciousness and the meditation or tools to support that, you're going to begin receiving your own intuitive guidance as to which direction, which actionable steps that you are supposed to take. Step three, trust yourself. So whatever comes up repeatedly in meditation, whatever comes up repeatedly when you're writing, you are to trust yourself, trust it. Even if it's something weird, or especially if it's something weird or uncomfortable or makes you feel a little bit scared, this means you're on the right track because you're exploring something unknown. It's not gonna be familiar. It's gonna be something new. It's gonna be something different. It's gonna be something that scares you, that makes you uncomfortable. You're stepping into the unknown. This is when you know you're on the right path. Trusting your intuition and your guidance is the next step. This is what is showing you the path in which you are supposed to embark upon. And the first step is again, joy and education around whatever that joyful activity is, group of people is, places you wanna go, et cetera. Step number four, just take the first step. You are to begin immediately on pursuing whatever that joyful step is in your life, that joyful subject or people or meeting places. You are supposed to take immediate action and begin to just take the first step and begin to embark upon this journey. And as you begin to go along this journey, the steps will become illuminated and you will get more and more clarity. You are building momentum. You're building a momentum. You are at the top of the mountain right now and you just have a little snowball in your hand. You're supposed to push the snowball in the, in the snow, roll it along the hill. As it starts to go downhill, what happens? It gathers momentum, it gets bigger and bigger. You are supposed to start just creating the momentum right now. You're, you're starting to roll the, the giant stone down the hill. A note on this, while you're in this process, you are to begin this and these direct steps of meditating, writing, intuition, creating space, thinking about what brings you joy, what do I need to look up, where do I need to go, who are the people I need to meet, etc. As you do this, be mindful and pay attention to the synchronicities because as you pay attention to the synchronicities, when you take these steps, you will get breadcrumbs from the universe as to what your next steps will be. I wanna share a personal example of this 
to illustrate how a synchronicity would work or a commonality, something that's happened in my life to illustrate what you can begin to look for in your life. So over and over for probably a couple of months now, I don't even know when it started. I had been getting these messages that I need to tap into using Oracle cards again, and even a tarot deck and the old school Rider Waite tarot deck and start doing that. And then all of a sudden a bunch of stuff on YouTube started coming up about tarot and astrology and things like this. And I was like, why do these keep coming up? And sure it's the algorithm, right? It's sending me stuff, but it was more than that because it wasn't just YouTube and like social media, digital stuff sending me. I was getting my own weird little synchronicities about tarot deck, oracle cards, using my intuitive guidance, my connection with the divine in order to serve others and use this as a tool in a way. And so here's the other synchronicity about that. So I was getting this kind of feeling and thought that I should pursue this and start looking into using, I've used oracle cards forever. If you're new to my channel, first of all, welcome. If you've been supporting me and watching me, welcome back. And you know, in the beginning when I started making content again, I was pulling one oracle card because that's just what I felt called to do at the end of my videos and I stopped doing that and I had gotten messages about, man, I really wish you would still do that. And some people were like, oh, it's weird and whatnot. So I was getting these weird callings, right? I went back home to San Diego for a friend's barbecue, gosh, I don't know, maybe like a month ago or so. Man, time goes by so fast. And when I went back, I saw an old friend of mine and she's like, I'm home, my sister's having, uh, just went into labor, she had a, a birthday, but I do wanna see you let me know you're gonna be there. So I was at my friend's barbecue and she's like, hey, I'm coming back from the barbecue. I just really feel like I wanna see you. Are you still over there? I was like, yeah. So anyways, she came over, we caught up. It turns out she moved in with a tarot reader. This woman reads tarot for a living. And immediately I was like, huh, well that's interesting. And I was like, I kind of feel like I'm supposed to get a reading from this woman. So anyways, I reach out a couple weeks later, a month later, whatever it's been. And I said, hey, I was like, I'm interested in getting a tarot reading from your roommate and I'm also interested just in talking to her about what she does because she does this for a living and just learning her process and seeing if this is something I want to pursue. She got back to me uh, whatever a day later whatever it was and she had t messaged me and she's like hey you know my roommate's going through a lot of stuff she's like but I'm gonna introduce you to this woman I met at the farmer's market we clicked right away she's a really good friend of mine or, or our energy is just great. I love her, she's amazing. And she's also a tarot reader. I took it from a sign of the universe. You had asked me and then I meet this girl that I'm supposed to, or this woman I'm supposed to introduce you to her. And so she put me in contact with this woman. I didn't get a reading with her because it all came to fruition and I was like, okay, clearly I'm supposed to start divining. I'm supposed to start tapping into my own guidance and divining for myself. So all that being said, this is how the synchronicities will work in your life as you pursue these interests in these things, and I've been really drawn to it now, and we'll get to that in a moment, you will begin to get the breadcrumbs from the universe that are leading you along your path as to where you're supposed to go. So follow your gut, trust your intuition. If you have trouble doing that, be intentional and deliberate about creating space for and time for meditation and discovering what makes you joyful and what the first step would be the education you need to create and pursue is. As you begin to tap into your intuition and you pursue and begin to take actionable steps, your synchronicity, your, your spirit team, you will begin to get more and more signals and guidance from the universe as confirmation or as a redirection. So just, again, you've got to pay attention and trust yourself. This is your divine guidance showing your way. So on today's thumbnail, you can probably see that I took a picture because before I sat down, I pulled a card the thing I'm supposed to learn, I work and now working or will be working with a lot of different Oracle decks, but what I was drawn to and what my guides were telling me was that I'm supposed to start working with the Rider Waite Tarot, the old school classic, like first iteration of tarot reading and getting into it. So I ended up buying a book and I've been studying and reading this and this is the book, it's called The Ultimate Guide to Tarot by Liz Dean and I bought just the old school Rider Waite Tarot deck. But what I'll tell you is this, these signals that I was getting, it's about following your joy, your intuition, because as I have been reading into this and now doing some readings for myself, it's wild what's coming up in the cards, my own divine guidance, and how much joy and excitement and fulfillment it's bringing me. And that's number one. 
That's what I'm imparting upon you. You follow your intuition, your guidance, your joy. It's leading you down a path that you have no idea where it's going. You will get breadcrumbs and as you follow it, you will know you're on the right track by how you feel. So I've been really happy and it's been a wonderful thing to start looking into. And I pulled a card and I only did one card and, and of course it was on the thumbnail and it's the Knight of Pentacles. And of course, I can't make this stuff up. Now I did it before, I did my little ritual and clearing and just pulled one card before for this video and you cannot make this stuff up, guys. Like I'll, I'll start doing it live on the videos too. So the Knight of Pentacles, the key meaning is, here's first of all what the card looks like. There we go, Knight of Pentacles. So the key meaning of the Knight of Pentacles is a few things. So. The key meaning is improving prosperity. So you especially probably been looking for guidance for your career, for major changes, what you're supposed to do, things like this. This is confirmation for you, the message that I gleaned from my own guidance and then also starting to learn meanings and stuff is this is confirmation that as you follow your greatest joy and you pursue that passion, that interest, whatever it is for you, this is creating a foundation and stability for you improving your financial situation and setting a whole new baseline for how you will live the new life that you wanna create. But anyways, the pentacles is the element of earth. It pertains to property, money, and achievement. So here I am talking to you and you clicked on this video as a divine message for you about the major transformation. What am I supposed to do about the direction of my life, where I'm supposed to go, especially for work and career. So that's clearly what we're pointed at. I pull a card in the suit of pentacles, which has to do with building foundations, that has to do with all of the earth signs and astrology. And then this particular card is the Knight of Pentacles. I'm going to just read a couple of things that stood out as I was reading the description. So as an influence, the upright meaning of the Knight of Pentacles is showing financial growth and good investment. This card means plans concerning property progress. Property progress. With strategizing and setting a realistic goal, you will succeed. Pay attention to the practical details now and future benefits are assured. Day to day, this Knight asks you to get through boring and routine but essential tasks. In work, the card can indicate more money coming to you due to a raise, bonus, or promotion, but you need, may need to work harder in return. An additional meaning of this card is finding a secure home, potentially with a partner. As a person, the knight is, a loyal, and depend the knight is loyal and dependable. He is a natural protector and security is very important to him. He may work in property or finance. As a potential partner, he has much to offer and is genuine. For some, he may lack excitement as he plans rather than reacts. He can be slow to to judge and express his feeling and keeps on safe subjects. So this is about stability. This is about you setting a foundation and planting seeds for the long run. And by you following your joy and beginning to pursue your interest, your excitement and educating yourself, you're setting a stable foundation for the rest of your life, for your highest timeline, for the life that you want to create. One of the things there's a deeper description on in this book about the Knight of Pentacles I found interesting, and I'll show the card again. And it talks about the other suits for the Knights, okay, and this is confirmation for you, this is why I'm sharing this with you, is the other Knights, uh, the Knight of Wands, the Knight of Swords, etc. they're all in kind of action and motion, and if you look at him, he's kind of just chilling out, just holding this pentacle, and he's on like fertile land. So that symbolizes planting seeds and setting a firm foundation for your future. So if you're in the middle of, you're either starting and wondering what you're supposed to do, or and that's where you're at in your life, or you've been doing this thing and maybe nothing's happened, you are on the right track and you're in the monotony, but you're building, but you know in your heart you're building the right thing, you are doing the right thing. You are right where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to do the day-to-day -day tasks, continue to educate yourself and improve your skills. And again, this is video, take it as confirmation that you are setting the foundation for the life of your dreams. You're gonna make more money than you've ever made. You're gonna be financially free. You're gonna be able to have freedom of your time and schedule and be able to work with people that you want away from toxic people and environments, doing exactly what you wanna do with who you wanna do it, where you're supposed to do it, whatever you wanna do, totally free. That's why you're here. That's what you're for. This message is confirmation for you. This, the quote that I'll leave you with today is from Steve Jobs. Your time is limited. So don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma. 
which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and your intuition. So follow your passion, follow your joy, create space and be intentional and deliberate, no matter how busy you are, to start writing and meditating in order to tap in your divine guidance because whatever you're doing, you, it'll, you'll probably gain clarity, calmness, it'll give you a whole nother sense of well-being, your vibration will begin to shift. Pursue your passion, your joy, begin to educate yourself on what you need to educate yourself. That's the message I have for you today, guys. I love you so much and I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.